Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Pray First, a conversation we have Monday through Friday right here on the Pastor Doug page. It's so good to see all of you guys. Uh, We're still here. We're still here. We're still here. Come on, guys. It's good to see you guys. Hashtag live, hashtag recorded, hashtag shared. Get it out on your page. This is a very important day we're talking about here. We're going to be talking about how to pray for high-risk individuals. I hope that you guys are following along on the churchunited.tv website. I'm going to say that again, the churchunited.tv, T-H-E-C-H-U-R-C-H-U-N-I-T-E-D, the, the churchunited.tv. And go to the prayer focus page, and what you will find is that on Sunday, we focused our prayers on our leadership. That does not mean we're not continuing to pray for our leadership. That means on Sunday, all of us together collaboratively focused on praying for leadership. Our nation, uh, our governments, our locals, our nationals, our leadership in our organizations, our companies, our small businesses, all the way down to moms and pops, uh, our families, our fathers, our mothers, our patriarchs, our matriarchs. On Monday, we pray for healthcare professionals. Again, does not mean we're not continuing to pray for healthcare professionals. I want that to be included in your daily prayers. Matter of fact, you should go to thechurchunited.tv and go to the prayer focus and pray for all of these constantly over and over again. Also, on Tuesday, which was yesterday, we prayed for students. Uh, We prayed for everybody in the whole categories. Go back on the Pastor Doug page, the page that you're on right now, and see that. And today we're going to pray for, on Wednesday, high-risk individuals. Everybody hit the hearts, hit the lights, go crazy, and welcome all of our first-time viewers. Our reach has expanded by 10,000-plus views. It's been an incredible thing. Uh, I want you guys to understand that that is solely because you tag people in these posts. So I want you right now to start tagging people's names, start sharing this page out right now. If you have the option to share, go ahead and just get that out on your page so that everyone can see that. What's up, Coon Hunting Preacher down in Holly Springs? Barbie, Bonnie, Karen. What's up, Raymond Duffy? How are you doing, Guy Lolita? It's good to see you. Hi, Philip, Pam, Faith, Harrison, Faith and Harrison. Sitting in a tree, K-I-S-S-I-N-G. I I think y'all are, that's the husband and wife couple right there, buddy. Hi, hi, East Tennessee. What's up, Samantha? Audra, what's going on? Jan, Stormy, all of you guys, it's so good to see you. Today we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, uh, scientifically, what are we talking about here with the high-risk category. But I want to shed some light and attention on other areas that we need to be considering as high-risk that have not been considered, that have not been thought about. As I posted this morning online, I said, you know, Uh, We've put a lot of attention on certain things, and it's hard to pray for an all-encompassing situation when you don't know what to pray for, but it sure is a good thing to know that God already knows uh, what we're trying to say, what our heart is saying, what we're we're groaning inside with prayers that cannot be articulated uh, into sentences and paragraphs, and sometimes not even into thoughts. Have you ever prayed a prayer that was just kind of mush? Mush prayer, and God puts that stuff back together, and he knows what you're saying? Well, that's good, but here's the deal. There's something that we can do as we focus our energies in this time in prayer. And that thing is this. We can be part of a solution. There's a lot of blame to go around. There's a lot of, you know, he said, she said, he did, they did, they didn't. I shouldn't, I couldn't, I would, I wish someone else had. And they're going to do it, but they didn't do it, and they promised they'd do it. And a lot of blame going around for things being broken and messed up and fixed in times when we didn't even have a solution to answer because we didn't even know what this was. So here's my contribution to you guys. I want you guys to think about how to not be part of the blame because we all know at Pray First that people who blame things don't change things. We want to focus our energy on something other than that, and that is solutions. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today. The CDC uh, calls COVID-19, which simply means the coronavirus uh, 19, is a new disease according to the CDC and there is limited information regarding risk factors. Limited information regarding risk factors. These have been collaborated over the past couple of months based on current availability of information. What that tells you is that things are changing rapidly. I want you to be educated about this. That this isn't something we had a plan for. Now, there can be underlying plans that support structures that that handle and attack these, and I think that we're going to learn a lot of those lessons uh, during this time. But this is a uh, currently avail- based on current uh, currently available information and clinical expertise. 
older adults and people of any age who suffer serious underlying medical conditions, medical conditions might be considered high risk for severe illness from COVID-19. Based upon the availability of information to date, do you see how carefully these words are written? Those at high risk for severe illnesses from COVID-19 include people who are 65 and older, uh, people who live in a nursing home or long-term care facility, uh, people with chronic lung disease, people who have serious heart conditions, people who have uh, immunocompromised, uh, uh, their immunities are compromised due to cancer treatments, people of any age with severe obesity, uh, people who are pregnant should be monitored since there's little to be known. Now, a lot of people heard this, you know, women who are pregnant are at higher risk. That is not true uh, based on the available information right now. Uh, but we want to take care of our ladies who are pregnant, don't we? So let's talk about high-risk people, and then we're going to pray for high-risk people uh, because that's what we do. The elderly, everybody hashtag elderly. How many of you uh, discovered that through the definition of COVID-19, you're not praying for someone else. You're praying for you. I can't tell you how many people said, I just found out I'm elderly. <laughs> Guys, that is the hope of all of us is to become elderly, right? We want to live long enough to say, oh, I'm elderly. So I want you to think about that. Some of us are elderly. Uh, all of us know someone who is elderly. Some of us know people who don't act elderly, but acting is not an indication of elderly. Uh, so I want you to think about your grandparents, other people's grandparents. I want you to think about the fact that how uh, viruses and, and things spread. Now, see, we're not going to necessarily get a cure for the virus. Hopefully, we'll get an inoculation or something like an influenza-type deal. Uh, but hey, some of you scientists out there that have the Holy Spirit in you, you might come up with a, here's how we knock this, this sucker out 100%, like a Clorox wipe. And all God's people said, people with people are elderly. Their stuff is a certain age. Uh, it has a certain uh, amount of abilities to fight off things, a certain amount of strength to fight off diseases, weakened immune systems. I want you to think about people who uh, are diabetics. I want you to think about people who suffer from uh, hydrothyroidism and uh, you know the advancement and the slowing of the thyroids. I want you to think about people who are going through can cancer treatments. You know a lot of these people who uh, are going through chemos and radiations and, and have weakened immune systems, underlying medical conditions, obesity. Uh, but here's some things that we less consider. And it's something that's really been sh sh shaken inside of me is that there are other people who are high risk and they're less considered. I'm concerned that all of our attention or much of our attention is focused towards the medical physical aspect of healthiness. I'll tell you who else is at high risk. There is a high risk uh, to those who are suffering uh, from mental health issues. There is a high risk for those who are suffering from spiritual health issues. Uh, there are more high-risk people than the elderly, those who are uh, immune deficient, or those who have uh, diagnosed underlying medical conditions or underlying medical conditions. There's a high-risk group of people that I'm concerned about, and that is those who are dealing with uh, mental health issues, those who are dealing with uh, depression, those who are dealing with loneliness and isolation, I'm very concerned about m our mental health as we go through this, and not just ours, but others. It's going to be very important that your mind is set on something. Now, when I talk about medical and I talk about mental medical health conditions, uh, there's uh, you know the physical aspect of that, which is chemically driven, uh, DNA genetically coded, and, and things of that nature. But then there are those who are just suffering, not just, it's just as real, loneliness, depression, uh, fear, anxiety, anxiousness, uh, panic attacks, and so many other things. So less considered people right now who we need to be thinking about are those who were suicidal before. This is not helpful. Those who were fearful before, uh, this is not helpful. Uh, those who are anxious before, this is not helpful. So as important as you staying in, if you can be at home, I'm telling you, this is not a joke. This is not a conspiracy. This is, this is real. If you don't have to go out, 
don't go out. If you have to work, you have to work. So nobody go bucking wild on that. And I've got to work and I'm in the so-and-so. I know, I know, I know. But if you don't have to go out, don't. But just as important as not spreading a germ or a virus is important that you don't spread fake uh, uh, news articles, that you don't spread fake information, that you don't spread fear, that you don't spread isolation, that you don't say, that you don't type, that you don't share articles of fear-mongering. Some of you said, I'm just trying to educate people. Uh, thebooger.com is probably not where you want to get your information to educate people about viruses and about governmental issues and about the economy. There's some things that are true that are better left unsaid. There are some things that are true that are better left unsaid when we could focus our energies towards saying what is true that is best shouted out. I'm going to say that again. There are some things that are true that are better left unsaid, but there are some things that are true that are better shouted out. The Word of God is true, and guess what? It supersedes the truth around us. Uh, the Word of God is true, and it supersedes the issues around us. The Word of God is true, and it, it, it does not conform to the issues around us. The Word of God is true. It needs to be spoken. It, need to, it needs to be shouted. You need to quit sharing crap on your page and calling it education because it's foolishness, and it is fear-mongering, and you're just excited to be a part of another mess. You know, you watch the, watch the news feeds. It's the same people who share everything else crazy. So make sure that you love crazy people, but also make sure that you're not one of them. So mental health issues is something you... And when I say crazy, I'm not talking about mental health issues. Those people aren't crazy. I'm talking about people who are stable, who, you know, minded and clear minded. But man, do they like to share crap. So I should just say crap people, I suppose. So mental health issues, diagnosed mental health issues, loneliness, isolation, anxiousness. Here's some more things that we need to look at uh, that are high risk people. Here's high risk people the unemployed, high risk, the uninsured, high risk. The underinsured, high risk, the homeless. The homeless are crowding into and they're being forced inside. It's getting warmer. Many would have been spread out. Many would have been in other places. Many would have been traveling. But as, it's, as they're cracking down on cities and uh, states in the country, they're crowding inside with each other. Uh, so they're not socially distancing. They're they're being pressed inside with each other. They're, you know, making a soup, if you will, of viruses and disease and, and things like that. And the health care might not be there for them. It might not, you know, be diagnosed in time. They might not have the proper cleaning supplies, the proper things. Um, there's, there's just a lot that goes with that. The, the homeless are high, at high risk. The addicted are at high risk right now. They're at high risk right now. The addicted. Those who are suffering from addictions. The children. The children are at high risk right now to be abused. They're being sent homes to parents that didn't want them there. Not every case, but there are some cases. Uh, they're being sent home to parents who didn't want them, period. They're at high risk. I hear that the abuse of children cases is going up in these times. They're at high risk. The gullible. The gullible are at high risk. It's those people who turn to you every day and tell you, did you hear Willie Nelson died? And you're like, where's that? Well, it's all over Facebook. And then you go check, and Willie Nelson's still 300 years old, still singing on the road again, still puffing them short cigarettes that are against the law in most countries, most states. Man, Willie Nelson ain't dead. And then the next one pops up. Oh, my goodness. Did you know that Gilligan died from Gilligan's Island? And I mean, it's spreading like wildfire that Gilligan died. Gilligan died 15 years ago. We know Gilligan died. It's just as sad this time as it was last time, but you don't have to keep bringing it up. So the gullible. Oh, man, do you think that this publisher's clearinghouse thing says I've won $10 million and it has a gold sticker and they put a 25-cent stamp on it? Do you think that this is going to make me healthy, wealthy, and whole? And you're just like... Come on, the gullible are at great risk right now to scams, social media news, social media information, online diagnosis, 
people running to google.com with a lump on their face thinking they've got a turmeric cancer and it's called a zit. Pop it, rub it, wash it, you'll be okay. I mean, there are just, the devil is a liar. Lucifer is a, he will, he's a deceiver and he will give you little things at this time uh, to make you believe a lie is true because Satan always <laughs> manufactures evidence to prove his lies. Pray for. This is what we're going to pray for today. We're going to pray for supernatural health, protection, covering, and healing. So let's pray. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we pray for those who are obviously at high risk, those who have autoimmune diseases, those who have underlying medical conditions, those who have diagnosed medical conditions. Lord, we lift up in front of you today the weak. We lift up in front of you today those who are at high risk physically, uh, in their physiological body. Father, the elderly, we lift them up today. We pray a special protection around them through the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that no spirit but your Holy Spirit will have your way in them. We pray for supernatural protection and supernatural health. This isn't black magic. This isn't some happy concept and principle of, you know, clarity of mind. This is the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of God himself, the power of you that we are applying to this situation, that we are inviting your presence into these places, that you will protect our people, that you will not only flatten the curve, but that you will reduce the deaths in this country to zero due to the COVID-19 virus and its things that it causes in the pneumonia and the, the sicknesses and the diseases. Father, we do pray for those who are elderly, weakened in their immune systems, have underlying medical conditions. We pray for the obese, God, that, that you would help them breathe. Father, that you will send breath into their lungs. You breathed into dirt and made it live, Father. I'm praying that you breathe back into the clay, the dirt, and make us live. Father, I pray for those who have diagnosed mental health condition, conditions and they are factoring things differently. God, their wiring is factoring things differently. Their coding, their chemical processes are factoring things differently. And the enemy is after them just as much as he's after anybody else. And he uses their uh, mental health issues against them. He uses the mental health issues as a leverage to kill, steal, and destroy from them. Father, I pray for those who are suffering from mental health conditions, that you would protect them, that your blood would cover them, that you would infuse them with life, truth, and healing in Jesus' name. Father, for those who are unemployed, God, and they're feeling sort of worthless and they're feeling a little bit confused and they're feeling like they can't provide and they're feeling like you know they're not going to have enough and they're feeling like they may never have enough and Satan is amplifying their unemployedness and their their financial state he's amplifying the fears and the and it's being promoted by crazy uh uh, people online who are, are posting out stuff that's scaring them to death and they see this thing from booger.com and, and Pete's little website and this person's little blog and they read that as if it's the truth found in your word, God. I pray that your word would be piercing and sharper than a two-edged sword, cutting and dividing rightly between the bone and the marrow. Father, I pray that they would understand, that they would recognize the truth. Father, they would turn towards your word and ask, why was it written? Everything that was written in your word was to remind us of what had happened, what you are doing, and what you will do. Your word is there to comfort us, bring peace and power. It speaks to storms and says, be still. Father, you still walk across our problems, and I pray and invite you into this to do that for the unemployed for the underinsured, or for the homeless and for the addict. God, for the children and their safety, for the gullible who are falling to scams, social media news, and, and, and giving themselves online diagnoses. Father, we pray for supernatural health and supernatural protection. We pray for covering and healing for those who are already sick. We pray for clarity and truth, what is real, real perspectives. Father, we pray for our friends and we rebuke spirits that would try to devour them. In the name of Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we thank you, Father, that you hear us, that you know us, that you care about us as individuals in whatever state we're in, and we love you too, in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. I just want to give you a couple of verses real quick before we go out of here. Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 11, there will always be poor in the land. Therefore, I command you, 
to be open-handed towards your fellow people who are poor and needy in your land. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28, Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing useful with their own hands, that they may have something to share with those who are in need. Exodus 17, 12, When Moses grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. And Aaron and Hur held up his arms, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady until sunset. Guys, I'm going to stop right on that one right there. This is where you and I set people down, and we hold up their hands. And while we're holding up their hands, we will see victory. This is where we hold up the elderly's hand. This is where we hold up the high-risk person's hand. This is where we hold up the student's hands. This is where we hold up the healthcare worker's hands. This is where we hold up our leader's hands. This is where we develop strong hands and strong knees. Remember, strong hands for worship and strong knees for prayer. This is where we come alongside and hold those up. Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. I need you. I'm imploring you. I'm asking you to do something for me, and that is go to thechurchunited.tv and look for the tab that says serve. Click on that tab. It talks about free meal boxes in the DeSoto County area that's available to you. It also talks about a grab-and-go meals volunteer application where you can come and serve. Very limited space. We have three sites, and we're limited to 10 volunteers per site. But as this rocks on further and further, we need to give people rest, and we're going to need some of you to step in and, and deliver that food, or not deliver it, ha hand it out the door, box it, put it together. There's also a place on there for you to submit serve ideas. I'm going to read you a few ideas right now because we're commanded to do this for people all the time, not just you hear people say at times like these, we're commanded to do. No, we're always commanded to do. By this, people will know that we're disciples, that we love one another. Here's some ideas that you can do to serve people around you. Pick up trash. Instead of focusing your energy on blame, here's some focused energy on outreach. Pick up trash on your street. Check on your neighbor. Take extra time to learn a new skill at home that will be uh, usable after the situation. Sit with your kids regularly and have them journal and write about the experiences that they're having day to day. We are living through a historical event. Live it and record it. Take some of your extra food to a neighbor and take some of your extra food in DeSoto County to the Dream Center in Horn Lake to Hunger to Hope in South Haven or to Cross Point Church because we are delivering that food out to a lot of people. We're doing that twice a week. Uh, um, let's see, have your students or yourself uh, create a TikTok or Instagram and share reasons to be thankful rather than reasons to be fearful. Uh, set up a Facebook page on your street so that the needs of your street can be listed and addressed. Volunteer to hand out food at local agencies like Church United where you are. Volunteer to do child care for medical and coronavirus testing. I mean, there's so many outreach things that you can do. Focus your energies. Do something positive. When you see articles that are spread from, like I said, booger.com and places, how about you go check their facts, their validity, and at least send an inbox to that person and say, hey, uh, that's not accurate. Or would you please remove it? You're scaring the children. I love you guys. Have a great day. I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.